Nelson. He's the uh, CTO of A3 uh, Data uh, in Brazil, and he's also AWS Community Builder. Uh, so without taking much time, let's give a big round of applause to Nelson. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, I'm, I'm Nelson Crepaldi. Everybody calls me name. Uh, Ney. I'm, I'm from Brazil. I'm CTO at A3 Data, a consulting business specialized in data analytics and artificial intelligence. And today, I want to tell you the story of how me and my amazing team built a solution that was able to process over uh, 450 million events per day in real time with AWS, okay? So this is the story. We have a customer that is a big financial institution in Brazil, and they had this challenge of processing and analyzing logs, AWS logs, application logs, system logs. They had to analyze it. They had to uh, decide or implement a rule to define if a security incident happened or not and take action on, on, on top of that. And we are talking about a data volume of approximately five terabytes a month, which is uh, kind of challenging. It was very interesting to work with. Um, and also one interesting point of the solution was that security rules in our case, they were really volatile. They could change a lot, like several times in a day. So the regular process of security team asking for engineering team uh, opening tickets, cards, oh, I have to update a security rule, please update this rule for me. This was just not possible because it changed a lot. And also we're talking about security. So this is a major a critical problem, as we say in AWS all the time, is job zero. Uh, so action should be taken as soon as possible, very quickly. It's uh, a, a whole different thing when you have an incident if you take action a minute later, an hour later, or a day later. So this was very critical. Uh, our starting point in this company, this was a big company with several data teams. There were already some, uh, some other teams responsible for migrating the logs for a security lake built on top of S3. So CloudTrail logs, application logs, and system logs were automatically migrated to S3. This was our starting point. We received JSON log files in this S3 bucket, and we had to build a solution that could implement in real time the rules for defining if an incident happened or not and delivering these results to the security analysts. Okay, so how do we do that? So first, we started thinking about some, uh, some AWS services that could help us building that. So, the first uh, was a really obvious choice was Amazon EMR. EMR is a great tool for data processing. It runs with Spark, and Spark has a great module called Spark Structured Streaming that can process millions of messages in real time. So it's a, a, a very good real time uh, data processing tool. It is resilient. This is interesting because if the streaming queries go down because of whatever, Spark can retake exactly from the point that it stopped. And also, this was very important for our case as well, Spark could stream from files, not just from regular streaming like Kafka or Kinesis or other message, uh, other message brokers that we have, but also from files. This was critical for our, for our case. We also uh, thought about Amazon OpenSearch. OpenSearch is a great tool. It's blazing fast, it's easy to index, to deliver data to OpenSearch because it has an API indexing system and it has OpenSearch dashboards which, run, which we can do for real-time visualizations. It runs on top of OpenSearch, so it is great. Those were two like obvious choices. So how, how are we so far for our requisites? So uh, real-time data processing, okay, yeah, Mark can help with that. Real-time visualization, okay, open search can help with that. But the business rules, the security rules problem, this was kind of tough, and this was not like so straightforward to, to solve, you know? So uh, we figured out that we needed to think 
of a customized solution, something that was not just out of the box, just connect services. Um, so what did we need? We needed, we started drawing a solution. We needed an application that the security analyst would interact with. In this application, security analysts should be able to register, manage, update, activate, and deactivate security rules which uh, would be stored in a table, a database, a backend database, and the security rules stored in the database should interact automatically with the real-time data processing pipeline. Okay, so this is the idea. Uh, after a few days of thinking and trying and experimenting, we developed this solution. We built an, a web web app a web application with Python and a very well-known Python library called Streamlit. Uh, it was packaged in a container image and deployed to EKS, to a Kubernetes cluster. And for, for the back end of this application, we chose to work with DynamoDB. DynamoDB is a great tool. It's a NoSQL database. And we chose that because it's, it's really fast, has a really low latency, and Spark can integrate very easily uh, with uh, DynamoDB. So this is our first version of the solution. In the, in the top part of the drawing, you can see the security analysts, uh, they interact with the application running on Kubernetes. The security rules that they registered, managed, updated, they were stored in DynamoDB tables. And in the bottom part, we have running on EMR, uh, streaming query. The streaming query read files from read JSON files from the security lake, did the the, the, the the joins with the security rules, did the calculations to define if a security incident happened or not, write back wrote back the results to S3 because it was really important that we 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 have auditing, and delivered the results to Open Search for uh, the consumption of the security analysts. Okay. This is great, we were very excited, but this was not good enough. Why was that not good enough? We faced a few challenges that I, I want to tell you about. First challenge was related to open search sizing. So open search sizing is not trivial at all, it's really important. If you undersize it, you're going to uh, blow up your solution, you, 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 open search would just, uh, will just can't handle it. And if you oversize it, you blow up your credit card, which is also really bad. We, we don't want to do that. And to, to correctly size open search, you have to take into account indexes, replications, storage size, life cycles. I remember that last year, we had a session on AWS Black Belt about data and analytics, and the whole day was just about open search. There are a few people that were there with me, actually. And a great part of this day was just about open search sizing. This was like a, a real challenge. The solution was not fast enough. This was a great problem. Uh, and we, after analyzing it, we understood that uh, the way Spark handles uh, real-time processing is in micro-batches. It iterates, it grabs a, 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 a portion of the data and do whatever it has to do. And on this process, we had many tasks happening in every iteration, and this was slowing things down. I'm going to show you in a bit. And also, although I said to you that it's easy to integrate, uh, to deliver data to open search, but when you work with Spark, usually you work with a, a basic data structure called a data frame, and when you have to write that, somewhere to S3, to Kafka, to RDS, to whatever. You just grab this data frame structure and you just write it out of the box. And this uh, very common, very clear integration that Spark develops are, developers are used to work with, this was not available to open search. So we had to figure out something else to make a data frame in Spark appear on open search. So we did our homework. And after three 10-day sprints of optimization, we went from this first version of the solution, which was not good enough. With this solution, we were able to process uh, around 8 million messages 
per day, which was far, far away from what we needed. We needed something like uh, 400 million messages per day. And then we got to this new solution. I'm going to take you through the steps of optimization that we did. First, we added one, uh, one, one step in the process. This is uh, 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 a Spark streaming query that just transformed JSON files to Parquet. Why? Because Parquet files perform a lot better with Spark than any other text-based files like CSV, JSON, whatsoever. So the first thing is that we converted everything from JSON to Spark. This was in real time, a streaming query, and we, we rolled the Parquet files to another zone of the security lake. Then another thing we did was to separate everything that was happening at once, we separated in two different parallel streaming queries. So the first streaming query here in the middle, uh, it read uh, the logs now in Parquet from our data lake, uh, did the calculations, calculate if an incident happened, and indexed uh, the results in real time in open search. And for that, we used a library called OpenSearchPy, which uh, makes things a lot easier. And in parallel, we separated, we built another streaming query that ran in parallel that was reading the, the log files in the, in the lake, doing the calculations, and writing the results back to S3 for auditing. Why was that important? Because latency is very different when you are working with OpenSearch and S3. Although S3 is really fast, but open search, you are optimizing latency. You are really building something for, re for real-time data. And uh, S3 is, is a, 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 a different thing. It's not so fast, uh, so low latency. Uh, another thing that we did was, before, every, at every iteration, we were reading the security rules table again and again and again and again to join it with, uh, with our uh, streaming pipeline. And this was slowing things down, although I said to you that rules changed a lot, but not like every 10 seconds, like two, three, four, five times a day, which is really a lot. So we figured out there was no reason for us to read that every single time. So we started reading the security rules table as a fixed data frame and join that with the streaming data frame of logs from S3. So this speeded up things a lot. And for that to work, we had to make a little modification in the application. So every time the security, security analyst should register, manage, update, do whatever they, they wanted with the security rules. And when they are done, they should activate that rule. When that rule is marked as activated, Streamly, the Python code, would restart the streaming query. It would restart from the exact point that it stopped because it's resilient. It would read again the security rules table and everything is fine and working again. Next, just a, a few more things. We used in the first version a command called for each that treats every event as a single line and does whatever it has to do to every single one of the events. And we, we changed that for using a for each batch command. So instead of uh, calculating with every line, we calculated with every batch. So a batch could have like one, two, five, ten events. And doing that in a, a micro batch style, which is how Spark works, this speeded, thing up, speeded up things a lot. And at le uh, the, the last thing, we used also a, a configuration on open search. Instead of indexing every event one by one, we use parallel both. So the events were indexed, all, all of them together in parallel. So with this optimizations, we managed to reach the cool uh, goal of 400, 450 million events per day. Everybody was really happy. This was really important. And although this is a cool solution, and adds a lot of value to the business because we're talking about security in a, fi in a financial institution which is built upon trust. You know, imagine if, if a bank uh, has a scandal of security breach or something. This is like tragedy, so this, is, this was really important. And when we showed this solution to the director of the area, security director, he 
said something that we liked a lot. This is our first real-time pipeline in the bank. I, and and if, if I may say that the first of many to come, he was very excited about that. And with that, I, I want to show you that we had two big, uh, two big gains with this project. One, of course, was to have a real-time security system where the security team could act in real time, be notified in real time, could take action in real time. And this is great and a lot different from taking action a day later, an hour later, or whatever. But also, we, uh, we were able to overcome a, a cultural difficulty in the bank because the, the, the technical teams were not so eager to try real-time pipelines. It is difficult. It costs a little bit more, not just a little bit, kind of more than batch, uh, regular batch pipelines. And they were very resistant at first. This was a very tough discussion with the architecture team of this financial institution. And after this is working, after this is, is, is functional, okay, so I guess we now can try real-time pipelines. And this was the first of many others that came later. So it was a really big cultural change uh, for this financial institution. I cannot tell you about the story without showing you the amazing team that worked with me in the, in, in, in the project. Luis Nascimento, Masao Mitsunaga, Guilherme Splugis, and Guilherme Borba. Amazing people that work with me in uh, A3 Data. And that's it for today, guys. I hope you liked it. Uh, here are my socials. Please reach out to me. My name is very, uh, is very different, so it's very easy to find me. And please, this is very important to me, give me feedback, give us feedback, uh, complete the session survey in the mobile app so I can improve uh, every day. Thank you so much for listening.